Greetings hobbies, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video I'm going to be answering a request of how to make a fuel can, also known as a jerry can. During this tutorial we will be using a couple of add-ons, I'll be using machine tools which is free and adds your ability to have this pie menu that I like a lot but it does have some extra features, one of which we're going to use during the video, and I'll also be using hard ops and box cutter as well as mesh machine. These are both paid for add-ons, there are links in the description if you're interested in those, and you can do most of the functions that we're going to do without them, it just takes more time. So the first thing we're going to do is take our default cube and scale that up a bit. So I'm going to scale that, so S on the Y axis to make it a bit wider, and then S on the Z axis to make it a bit taller, probably somewhere around there. Maybe that needs to be a little bit wider on the X axis as well. So we've got it about there at this point, and that will probably do. And let's start with making the basic shape of this. So what I'm going to do is Control and A and apply the scale. And then we're going to go into edge mode. I'm using machine tools for that. You can obviously, if you don't have machine tools, just come into edit mode and then select your mode at the top on the left hand corner. And then I'm going to Control and R to add an edge loop. And I'm just going to add a single edge loop there and then left click so it goes into the center. And at that point, I'm going to Control and B and make sure that I've got that scrolled down so it's only got two. And then I can make sure that these are an even width from the two sides. So let's go for somewhere about there and click, and then I'm gonna select that edge, that edge, that edge, and that edge, and then I'm just gonna press S to scale, and I want to do that on the X axis, so I'll just press X, and let's scale that in somewhere to about there, as fuel cans have a tendency to have that shape. Now, we don't want these having really hard edges, so what I'm gonna do is Alt click there, so we've got the whole edge loop there, and then Shift and Alt, select that one there, and I'm gonna press Control and B, to bevel those and I'm going to scroll up so that's got somewhere in the region of let's say eight segments to it so it's nice and smooth. I'm doing this for 3D printing. If you wanted to do this for something like CG work, you probably can reduce that down by a lot. And then we've got those there. Now at this point, all these extra edges on the top are a little bit superfluous and are kind of going to get in the way of things that we might want to do later. So we're going to get rid of those. For that I'm going to use hard ops. So if I just press Q, and then operations and then clean mesh, it's gonna clean that. And that does give us engons on the top, which again, if you're doing CG work, you might not like, though there's plenty of ways around that. But for 3D printing, that's fine. And it's gonna help us with some bits that we're gonna do later. Next, we want to make this shape and jerry cans normally have this sort of cut at the top leading down to the front and we're going to use box cutter for that so i've pressed alt and w to get into that you could use booleans in another way i just find this a little bit quicker and i'm just going to cut oh no i'm not i'm going to press d and change this to an engon cutter and then i'm going to cut somewhere like there and i'm going to hold down control so it's not at a fixed angle something about there probably looks about right and then i'm going to go to my last point and triple click to cut through. Now I have noticed that my box cut seems to be having this weird thing here where it doesn't quite cut on this forward edge. So if you go into object mode and then Q and then ever scroll, you can just select this and then S and then X to expand that out a bit. I'm not sure, I must have fiddled with something with my settings there. So let's have a look at this as a shape. I think that's probably gonna be a bit more extreme than I want. So I'm gonna go into vertex mode, W to come out of box cutter, select those at the bottom, and then G and Z that up to maybe around there. That's probably a bit more like what I want. So it's really easy to fiddle around with that. And then we're gonna H to hide that. And then I'm going to come into my modifier panel and I'm going to say that I'm happy with this. So I'm gonna apply it. You could also do that by pressing Q and then going to mesh tools and smart apply. I've got that set as my favorite so I can hit Q, Q and enter really quickly. And then we need to make another cut for where these handles are gonna be. So Alt and W again, once again into an Engon cutter and I'm gonna go somewhere around there and then maybe there, and then up. Something like that, double click, drag that through, and again, you'll notice it's done it again. Not sure why. If you do know why, do hit me up in the comments section. I'd love to solve that problem. And then I'm gonna press X to turn this into a slice, and then I'm going to slice this. And once again, I can click on this object, Q, ever scroll, and then I'm gonna click, and then S and X to scale that up, so I've solved that problem again. Now that we've got this, this object here is where we're gonna be making our handles from. Let's apply these, so Q, Q, and then Smart Apply, because I've got it set to my quick favorites. And then I'm gonna grab those two vertices. And I think I want this coming out a little bit more, so these handles come out further. So I'm just gonna G and Y to somewhere around there, maybe. Now, 
let's cheat on making these handles and make it a bit quicker. So I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm going to forward slash to isolate this and let's delete a lot of these points. So I don't want any of these edges. I probably actually should have done these with vertices. It would have been quicker. Delete and we'll delete those edges. But I do want an extra edge there. And actually, then I need to delete these edges too. So now we've got our three edges there. You can see those a little bit more clearly if we come here. And I'm going to, importantly, right click and then convert to a curve. Because this is going to make this vastly faster. Because what I can do is come down here to my object data properties, which looks like a curve. Go to geometry, scroll down to where it's got bevel. And I'm going to up my depth to make my handles. And I probably want to turn that resolution up. I want to go to 64 so it's nice and smooth. And we've got our handles being made. Now, this has been made centered where our curves were or our lines were. So we're going to need to move these later. And I am going to go to fill cat. So these are going to create solid objects. Uh, I use that in inverted commas because it's not quite going to be solid until we fix it. So let's change that depth until we're happy with them. Somewhere around there. What I can do is just go into edit mode, select those, and then G and Y or G and X even those across so they're going to be in the right place. Don't worry, I'm going to worry about that other one later. We're just going to do this here and then I'm going to fiddle around with that depth until I get something that I want. And each time I might have to move it a little bit. I think probably actually there is about right. So once I've done that, I'm going to convert this back to a mesh. So right click, convert to mesh. And then let's solve our first problem. And that's that our vertices here aren't actually attached. Now, this is a really quick thing to solve. If you've got machine tools, you just click three and that's now been fixed. So that uses the smart cleanup and we'll notice now that is all fixed. So you've got that sorted. So that's the way I do it. That's why I use that fill caps. It just takes seconds to sort out. And then I can go to object mode and we can just G and move that down to about there so that everything's going to fit in a bit nicely. I'm actually going to G and Y and move that back just a tiny bit to there. So that's looking good. We've got our handles. Everything's pretty nice. I do want to smooth this out a bit. In fact, do I like this? It doesn't look like it gives enough space to move things. So actually, I'm going to come back to when we're at this point, and I'm just going to select those G and Y and then bring those a little bit further forward so we've got a decent handle. Yeah, I think that looks better. Convert to mesh. And then we'll just G and put those in place to somewhere about there. Much nicer. And then let's sort out this harsh edge there. So I'm just going to go into edge mode, select that one. I'll select the one in the middle as well. Control and B. And we can smooth that out with however many segments we want. I'm just scrolling up to change those amount of segments. I'm going to go to 16 and I'm going to probably leave it about there. That looks about right. And then I'm just going to press Alt and X and mirror via the x-axis using hard ops there. If you don't have hard ops, you can just come over here and then set up your own mirror modifier. So you can do that that way. And then we've got our handles pretty much sorted at that point. So we're all good to go. And I just can't remember if I did my vertices. So I'm just gonna come in here and press three again to clean that up. And we've got that sorted. Now at this point, we probably want to start with some of our other bits. So let's start with this sort of central thing that they sort of have on all of these. I'm not sure why they're there. I'm guessing so that you don't get any sort of suction when cans are next to each other. I do know we've got the three handles. They have the three handles so that if they're empty, one person can hold it in the center and carry several of them. But if your fuel can is full and really heavy, you can have one person on either side having each of the handles. Really cool ergonomic design there, really clever. So let's get on with our central sort of symbol where you've got this sort of square bit with lines coming off. I'm describing that really poorly, but you'll see what I mean. So let's shift an A, mesh, and bring in a cube, and then let's scale that up to about the size that we want. Let's go about there, and then let's G and X that out to the side. So we're going to have it coming in about that much, and then let's G and Z that down. So it's about center of our fuel can, or the main body of our fuel can. Then we're going to get rid of the middle bit. So I'm going to go into face mode, Isolate this, select that face, that face there, and then out of isolation mode, and then let's I to insert those. Oh, no, we haven't applied the scale, so let's apply the scale with Control and A and scale, and then go back into face mode and I to insert those. Otherwise, it's not going to be an equal depth on each side, and probably somewhere around there. I think I'm happy with that. 
and then control and E and then bridge edge loops and we've now got that sorted. You could have done this with a solidify modifier as well if you deleted out those faces, but I have a tendency to find that this causes less problems with what we're gonna do next. So next I'm gonna control an R and then just drag that off to one side totally. Do make sure that your auto merge vertices are off, otherwise you're gonna have a problem. And then I'm gonna G and Y and come in however much I want to come in. Let's say 0 0.4 minus, that should probably do. And then I can control an R down here, do exactly the same thing, except for this time G and Z to move down 0 0.4 minus again. And then I can go into face mode, select that face, select that face, and then let's E to extrude, and that will automatically come out however much we want. Do I like it being pointed? Hmm, let's have a look at this. So object mode, Alt X, mirror that way, Alt X and mirror that way and we've got our mirrors on both sides. And then with that object selected, I can select the object we want to Boolean, Control and minus, and we've got that being cut out. Let's have a look at that with the points. So normally, I don't believe this had points on it, on the tip of each thing. I think instead, if I just uh, bring that back, and then let's cut through this. So I've still got box cutter on, so let's just cut there, 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 and then cut through. So normally it would look like something like that. I'm not sure which one I prefer actually. I think I'm gonna stick with that actually. So let's go with, uh, with that at this point and we've got that sort of symbol that's done and we can always mirror this across our X so that we can have that on both sides. So yeah, liking that. Now let's sort out some of these harsher edges. So we're gonna have to apply this, what's up there. Let's just go through our Boolean, so it's that one. So let's apply that. And then I want to go into edge mode and I wanna select that edge and that edge, Control and B. Let's round those a little bit so they're a little less harsh. And then this one, I want much more rounded, somewhere around there. Oh, we might have to extend out these faces slightly. So let's do that a little bit more. Uh, up our vertices, so it's going nice and smooth. And then we're probably gonna have to sort out, yeah, they need to go a little bit further. So let's go into vertex mode here. Shift and Z, W to come out of box cutter, and then just G and Y those further back, somewhere around there. That should be fine. I'm just gonna G and Z those down just slightly so we don't have too many problems later. And then I think we want this edge being a bit more curved as well. Let's down the segments on that. And then this one, this one, and this one, and this one probably need a bit more to them as well. There we go. And then at this point, I'm just gonna select there. Oh, it's not gonna like that, so let's click, Alt click. So that is using Mesh Machine to do that. Okay, this is called L Select. If I just press Y, and then you go into Select, and then L Select, it does a much better job of selecting the edges that you're wanting, whereas if you use Blender's natural tool and alt click there, it's selected that internal one. If you don't have Mesh Machine, and I appreciate it is quite an expensive add-on, it is great, but uh, it is expensive, you can just control click and go round. Uh, I don't need to do that, so click, alt click, and then shift, click, and then alt click, and then you've got that. So then we can just bevel all of these together. So control and B, and then let's do something a bit smaller. We still want it rounded, but not massive. Something like that. There you go. That looks like a really nice shape. Very happy with that. Now at this point, I will say this bit here isn't looking quite as smooth as these because I did it with eight. Now, that's not a problem. I don't think printing-wise that is gonna cause you any issues at all. This isn't gonna be a large object. But if you do want to fiddle with it, if I just go into edge mode here, or actually face mode, Mesh Machine has a really great tool for that. Again, paid for add-on, but very useful. If I control click up to there, and what you could do is press Y, and then you go to refuse, what that allows you to do is change the amount that you've got. So you can basically scroll up, and you'll notice I'm adding more detail to this. So for example, I can go to, let's say 16, which I've got on my edge here, and suddenly it's gonna look a lot smoother. So it depends on if you think you need that or not. I quite like that. So I'm actually gonna come in and then change this one as well. And you'll notice even though I selected these ones here, it automatically translates that over to the other parts of the bevel that it's connected to. 
And yeah, that looks much better. At that point, we're pretty much done. We just need our filler cap. And you do need to decide, do you want these coming over this bevel or not? I actually quite like this, but if not, you can always move these in slightly. So you could just change this around. Let's grab bows and then G and then X. Depends whether you want that there or here. So that is entirely up to you. So then we need our filler cap. That's going to be relatively simple. Shift A, mesh, and we'll bring in a cylinder. Let's up that to 64 vertices. And then let's S to scale that down, G, and then we'll R to rotate that to somewhere where it looks about right. Again, pretty happy with that. And then we'll just go into edge mode, Control and R, drag that up. And I'm going to tab into face mode, Alt select there, and then we're going to Q, Alt, and E, macro to increase that in size somewhere around there. And then actually, let's go to that edge. Let's S to scale that in slightly. I think that looks a little bit more interesting like that. Mm. Yeah, that looks a bit more fun. And then if I want to do something funky with this, let's just bring in another cylinder. Let's down that to 32. R. Uh, and then let's move that here scale that down a lot if we do something like that what we can do now is if I click and then shift click on that object we can press Q with hard ops come to our radial array press shift click and click it and we get this around the center and we can up that to I don't know let's go 12 and then we can click there click on the object control and minus H to hide those and we'll hide the empty that's been made and we get a much more interesting filler cap where you've got something that a person could effectively hold on to to try and screw or unscrew it there we go and then I think I'm actually finding this bit a little bit harsh so let's Q, Q, and then Smart Apply everything, and then I'm going to Q again, because if you notice, we've got a lot of extraneous information that we don't really need there. So I'm gonna press Q, and then Operations, and then Clean Mesh to get rid of some of that mess. And that means I should be able to go into Edge Mode, click with Alt to get most of that. And then we've got, yeah, that works. And then I'm gonna do the same, oops, same thing here. So we've got those. And then let's do these parts on the inside as well. And we can just bevel these quite nicely just to make it look a little bit smoother with everything else that's here. We are going to have to avoid these bits, but I don't think we want a big enough bevel to cause a problem with that. So let's just get those sorted. I've just realized I've done this in the stupidest way possible. Right, let's just talk through that because I'm being moron. If I go into face mode and then alt click there, <laughs> we'll select everything. That was moronic of me. And then we'll do the same thing here for these faces. Oh, it doesn't want to like that. So let's just grab those. And then we can just go into edge mode from that way. And that's going to solve that and be much faster. Control and B. And then let's bevel that and then scroll that up a little bit. Make sure we don't hit that other bevel. And I will say that's looking awful. And the reason that's looking awful is if I just do that again and come to these options here, we've got these mitre options, which is looking pretty bad. If I change that outer mitre to arc, it's going to look way better. So you've got that option of changing the mitre outer option, and you can see the difference here. Look how harsh and sort of not very nice that looks. And then change that to arc, and it looks vastly nicer. There we go. So I think that's me done. We've got our fuel can there. Let's just mirror that to the other side. So we've got it on both sides and we just need to Boolean this together. Great times. If you found that video useful, please do hit the like button. And if you want to support the channel further, do consider going over to Patreon where you get all these videos a week early, ad free, and you can get these files to download. Have a great day, guys.